So now let's get into Clark's rule. And Clark's rule is going to give us the rule for when we have multiple bonds. So that means double bonds or even triple bonds. Um, so Tom Clark, so this is a cool story. Um, Tom Clark was professor of chemistry at HSU. Um, he won the Outstanding Professor of the Year in 1981 and 1982, so a long time ago. Um, and this rule is not just like an HSU thing. This is a really famous rule that's widely published throughout chemistry texts. Um, it it's just so happens to not be in our textbook. Um, so this is a bit, you know, older. It's an older rule, um, but I still think it works great. Um, so that's why I'm kind of diverting from the book a little bit and giving some credence um, to Professor Clark for his rule. 6y plus 2 equals x. That's the equation he came up with. So what does this equation mean? So in this, y are all non-hydrogen atoms. Okay. x is this number to be compared with to the total number of valence electrons. All right. And I'm going to work through some examples. It's kind of an obscure looking equation. Um, the math is obviously simple, but we'll work through some examples to see how this, what this does. Okay. So if we do this calculation, 6y plus 2, okay, where y is the number, I'll say uh, the number of all non-hydrogen atoms. Okay. So if it's 1, it becomes 6 times 1 plus 2 equals 8. If there's two of them, it becomes uh, 6 times 2 plus 12 equals 14, and so on. Okay. If this number x that we get from this equation equals the number of valence electrons, then we're good to go, and it's all single bonds. Okay. So for example, let's back up here, Okay, and I'll put in uh, 6y plus 2. So let's do this for water. So this number y, remember, is all non-hydrogen atoms. So for so that's only one for oxygen, right? So that's 6 times 1 plus 2, and that equals 8. That number 8, that equals the number of valence electrons. So we're good. We got the right Lewis structure. All single bonds, we're good to go. Okay. What about CH4? All right. Well, that's five non-hydrogen atoms, right? One for carbon, four fluorines, so five. So, and maybe you can see already that this is going to work really well. Six times five plus two is 32. 32 and 32, that's the right structure, right? All single bonds, okay? And we could do the same for methane and HF, and it would work out, and you should prove that to yourself, okay? So... What if x does not equal the number of valence electrons? Okay. Well, this is where this rule is very useful. So if x is greater than the number of electrons, then that means we need double bonds. And there's a really nice pattern with this. If x is greater than the number of valence electrons by 2, then that means we need one double bond. If x is greater than the number of valence electrons by 4, then we either need two double bonds or one triple bond, and so forth, as we could keep imagining, right? If x is greater than valence electrons by six, that could be three double bonds or two triple bonds, etc. Okay? So now, if x is less than the number of valence electrons, then the central atom has what we call an expanded valency and so what that means is it violates the octet rule. And by expanded valency, what I mean is it's Texas-sized. These are Texas-sized molecules. So that's my little joke, because everything is big in Texas. Um, so in other words, if X is less than the number of valence electrons, it could have 10 electrons surrounding it or 12 even, okay? So it's a Texas-sized uh, valence electron, okay? Because everything is big in Texas. Any of you from Texas to get that joke? Maybe you can give me some love in the comments. Um, okay, 